After the Fall is a fun VR experience, but even a month later, it has so many issues this game might not only hurt the brand, but the overall VR community. All After the Fall experiences are based off the PlayStation VR version. Some things might be different depending on what headset you are using. After the Fall is set in a frozen post-apocalyptic 1980s Los Angeles. After being frozen, you are lucky enough to be revived by some creepy old man, much like the ones at your family reunion. Only later to become a runner for the warm bodies hell-bent on murdering poor zombie families for their gooey insides. This yellow substance is called Harvest, and warm bodies can't get enough of it. Once addicted, you are forced to constantly buy it from vending machines or loot your fallen comrades. You can tell the setting is in America, as the healthcare system charges you over 250 bucks or more in the harder difficulties for a one-dose EpiPen of a life-saving drug. And I'm sorry, you can't tell me that going into a cold body's apartment building with a butthole AI named Jimmy I see snowies. murdering half the complex and we're supposed to be the good guys? As lame as the story is, it's just cheesy enough to join some friends or randoms to take down the cold body's revolution. If you've played Arizona Sunshine or Firewall Zero Hour, you should be pretty familiar with how After the Fall plays. It's a simple VR zombie shooter that makes taking down the hordes of the frozen undead quite gratifying. When first loading into the game's main hub, you'll enter a dimly lit room full of arcade cabinets. These arcade machines will be your way to pick your missions, join a group, or jump into a PvP match. You also share this area with about 20 other players as they run around getting their quests done. There is one NPC that hangs out in the hub, Luna Gonzalez. She gives you quests that unlock each new zone. Once you unlock all zones, she becomes useless. You can still ring her bell, but there isn't much else you can do. It is possible she could become the daily quest giver, but we'll just have to wait and see if the developers will continue to support after the fall with more content updates. It's still got some life in it. Early into your hub introduction, you will have to purchase a weapon in the gun range area. This in-game weapon walkthrough is only the start of what will soon become the most convoluted way to upgrade your weapon. You have six guns to unlock, two pistols, an Uzi, a shotgun, and two rifles. Do not underestimate the shotgun. Once you figure out quick reload, it will become your savior. When it comes to upgrading, I understand that, woo, hey, this is VR, and developers feel they need to shovel VR gimmicky features into the game. It doesn't have to be super involved. It needs to be fun. Just let me pick my upgrade from the NES controller gaming cabinet and have it auto-apply. I really don't want to have to manually upgrade my gun for the hundredth time the game bugged out and lost all my modifications. It doesn't help that some weapon upgrades look the same as old ones, so it's difficult to tell if you swapped out parts or just dropped them on the table. On top of how unfun upgrading a weapon is, if you play a Nightmare, the hardest difficulty, and die, you lose all your weapon upgrades and mods on them. You have to rebuy and upgrade everything. This is far too punishing for a game that will have you mostly playing with randoms, which leads to people quitting the group in the middle of a run. To maximize the gameplay, please, for the love of God, play with an aim controller. This will make it much easier on you and anyone you play with. I've tried the move controllers, but my god, they're awful. Anyone playing on any other system, you will have joysticks, you'll be fine, but the move controllers don't have them. Play a few rounds to familiarize yourself with the strange controls, as it will take a few games to stop hitting square to reload. Hey, we got a blue disc. Will you quit doing that? Once the game is beaten, you have unlocked five stages with four difficulties to choose from. Each stage is varied enough from the last, so they don't feel too similar. This is a good thing, as you'll be running these stages quite a few times, thanks to the RNG the mod upgrade system uses. Throughout the stage, you have a chance to find two colored discs. A oh, red one? Are you serious? Depending on the difficulty, you have a chance to find even higher tier upgrades. Make sure whoever picks up the disc installs it into the arcade machine in the safe rooms. If they forget, and you all make it to the end, only the person holding the disc gets the upgrade. I've always disliked RNG-only systems when it comes to getting gear. This could cause you months worth of playing to get all the upgrades, as someone else could get them all in a week. You do get credits if you get duplicate mods, but I would have loved to have seen salvage or something of the like. 
this could be used to buy the specific upgrades you need. The most important thing that After the Fall excels at and keeps me coming back is the gunplay. All the guns feel like they have some sort of weight to them and shooting the horde of zombies is so satisfying. Depending on what controllers you are using, there should be a playstyle that suits you. If you want to dual wield Uzis or pistols, go right ahead. Love going head to head? Grab yourself a shotgun and run right into the mass of them. Whatever gun you pick, you are going to feel like a badass while taking out your enemies. Get used to each weapon's recoil and learn to compensate for it. As you unlock more mods, you can get upgrades to make each gun more accurate. There is a barrel mod that increases damage, but also makes the recoil a lot worse. If you don't have enough recoil reduction, you might want to wait to apply the barrel mod. There will be a bit of mod strategy when it comes to playing the upgrade game. As for someone that is using the aim controller, you can only hold one gun at a time. This isn't an issue as you are forced to hold any gun with both hands, which greatly decreases the recoil. Because we use the aim controller, it's either my brother or I topping the kill charts over the PC gamers. Even with its drawbacks, I feel the aim controller gives you a better and deeper sense of immersion. What? With how troublesome adding mods and RNG upgrades are, they made it very easy to get a game going. In the main hub room, you'll simply pick up the NES gun controller, pick solo or online, pick your stages, and join your party. Most of the time, with the easier difficulties, forming a group is almost instant. One great thing about After the Fall is it's cross-platform. This should mean this game will have a larger player base for quite some time. Adding cross-platform friends is pretty simple as they go with a phone number style code that you can give to anyone on any platform. Then you can see when they're in-game, send them a party invite whenever you wish, and don't worry, you'll be sending them plenty of party invites. For whatever reason, everyone in the party gets kicked out after each run that returns to the hub. More often than not, most random parties want to return to the hub because they got some upgrades. Be aware, before the run closes, you have to be quick on sending out friend requests, as you might not see that person ever again. If you are partied up with randoms, you are able to send friend requests in the party area in the options menu. This is just one more area that could be streamlined a little bit more. Let people leave the party once they return to the hub. I hope Vertigo Games take some notes from Deep Rock Galactic and their party system. The bugs and exploits are running rampant right now and will drive people to quit if they haven't already. As of right now, there is an exploit that lets you glitch through a door of the safe rooms. This lets you run and aggro all of the zombies and despawn them. You can do this on any difficulty and has made getting the highest level upgrades trivial and makes it hard to find a legit group of players as everyone wants to exploit. Expect a lot of crashing on the PlayStation VR version, at least when playing on the PlayStation 5. It is awful. On the easier difficulties, it is rare to see a crash and this just lulls you into a false sense of security like, wow, hey man, this game is so well polished. But once you start running end game master or nightmare difficulties on Skid Row, the crashes hit you harder than a juggernaut on a rampage. It doesn't matter if you want to go back to the hub or run another mission. You will crash and you will lose your group. I have lost a lot of skill people to play with due to not getting my friend requests sent. When the game first launched, there used to be a lot of PlayStation players, but now it's become such a rarity to see one. I blame it due to the crashes and the terrible default controls of the Move controllers. There is no excuse not to have full controller customization in this current age of gaming. If Reddit is to be believed, there is hope for new content and weapons. The devs are back from their Christmas break and working on upgrades. We'll see what happens, but as someone who has been burned by their latest new game purchases, which becomes more rare every year, I've taken the I'll believe it when I see it approach. Music and sound effects are on point for After the Fall. Each gun sounds different and gratifying to shoot. When you're running out of ammo, there's a distinct sound letting you know when it's time to reload. The music isn't going to win any awards, but it does fit the game very well. The music intensifies according to the type of zombie that spawns. You'll know when a brute or juggernaut shows up as there's an audible growl and a quick music change. The PlayStation 4 is 9 years old and the PSVR is going on 6, so you shouldn't be expecting anything pushing the edge of graphical fidelity here. But After the Fall does a good job at keeping the frame rate steady while looking pretty good. Polygon counts aren't high and textures aren't super sharp by any means, but once the action hits, that all fades away. It's just you and your buds blasting oh, zombies. God damn it. 
I really wish they would have waited and spent a few more months polishing up after the fall. I can't believe the devs at Vertigo Games really thought this game was 100% ready for launch with all these bugs and exploits. I speculate the higher-ups wanted the launch window for Christmas, especially with everyone getting a shiny new VR headset. It's hard to pass up on all that potential cash flow. As I've gotten older, I've really slowed down on buying new games, as most launch in a buggy state that rarely gets fixed. This game only pushes me towards not wanting to buy new games. After the Fall has a good foundation to become a near-perfect VR experience. It all depends on if the devs will continue to build on what they started, or let it decompose and be forgotten. Even though I have had fun playing it, it pains me to say, I do not think this glitchy mess of a game in its current state is worth your precious game time. My fear for games that come out half finished for VR is that newcomers could think this is what VR is, leading them to get discouraged with the overall experience. Much like the inexpensive gear headsets that used phones for the cheap VR experience, I know a lot of people have based their overall VR contact with those garbage headsets and say VR sucks because of it. If you are still on the fence with After the Fall, at least keep an eye on it and wait for improvements if they come. Stay safe, stay retro, I hope you all find the games you're looking for. Don't forget to join the community by clicking all those good things down below. We'll see you in the next video. Later.